For my trip, I booked my tickets to Hangzhou on sea trip itself. So as a foreigner, you would have to go down to the train station to get your physical tickets. I'd recommend that you get to the station two hours before your departure time. And for foreigners, you have to use the manned check-in counter with your passport. You can't do it the automated way like the locals do. For me, I took a sleeper train because I booked my tickets too late, there were no more seats and basically this was what I saw when I was on my train. Public transport in China in general is very convenient because it's all integrated with Alipay, you just have to open it, scan a QR code and then it just deducts from your Alipay itself. Lingying Temple is one of Hangzhou's most famous Buddhist temples and also one of the 10 most famous Buddhist temples in China. Within a few minutes walk from Lingying Temple, you will get to see Buddhist statues carved into stone at Fei Lai Feng. Legend has it that an Indian monk named Hui Li arrived in the valley 1600 years ago and thought that the peak was actually flown in from India because the peak's shape was more common in India. Hence, Fei Lai Feng is literally translated into peak flown from afar. I visited right at the long weekend of Tomb Sweeping Festival and this was the best time to pick Longjing tea leaves, which is what Hangzhou is also famous for. So I definitely had to make a trip to a tea plantation. You can visit Nijia Wu tea plantation but I heard that that was more touristy so I decided to head to Longjing village instead. When I arrived at the hostel I booked, it turned out that they didn't have the license to host foreigners so remember to check that properly on sea trip. So anyway, the staff brought me to another hostel which I could stay in and also introduced me to some things to do in Hangzhou. Qinghe Fang Street is one of the three things you can do in Hangzhou. During the Southern Song Dynasty, this was the center of culture and commerce in Hangzhou. And today, it's a well-preserved old street with lots of things to eat, see and buy.
As a foreigner, I haven't been able to use the ride-sharing apps because of verification issues, but I wanted to also bike around Hangzhou. So here is Hangzhou with China's first public bicycle project before the ride-sharing companies like Ofo or Mobike initially entered the scene. The bikes are available at docking stations, unlike those of the free-floating model like Titi, Halo and Meituan. You have to get a Hangzhou public transport card from the office and pay at least a deposit of 200 yuan. Tap the card to unlock and the first hour of every ride is free. Sihu, known as Wesley, is a must visit when you're in Hangzhou. It's so big that I think cycling around it will make your life a lot easier. There are lots of temples, pagodas and pavilions dotting the lake which you can leisurely take your time to visit. And the most famous one is Leifeng Pagoda, with its relation to the Chinese folk story, Legend of the White Snake. China has dedicated bike lanes unlike that of Singapore, so if you actually have a bicycle, it makes it a lot easier to be able to cycle around. So we're gonna go to a very famous breakfast place in Hangzhou. Let's go check it out. Uh, So I'm gonna try now and let you know how it tastes like. So this is with the new tail. I see some people doing here. Yeah. Okay. Then, then put the thing down inside and wrap it up. And then eat it like this. Yeah. Mm. 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 Not something I'm used to. <laughs> I mean, you can come here and try it out. I think it's one of those kind of foods where you would have to eat it for quite some time before you kind of get the taste of it. And then you feel that it's not bad actually. And that's all for my first holiday in China, which is at Hangzhou. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and please subscribe to show some support. Let me know in the comments below what else you'd like to see. Bye!